We are the 99%. It's the rallying cry of the Occupy Wall Street protesters. They say that a tiny minority controls America's wealth. So, how rich have the richest got? And how poor are the rest of us? Is it really 99% versus 1%? The richest 1% of the U.S. population, they own a third of U.S. net worth. So how did we get here? When times were good, everyone gained. In Bill Clinton's boom of 1993 to 2000, average incomes went up, just as they did during George W. Bush's boom at the beginning of his presidency. But if you were rich, you gained even more. That's nearly half of all the growth in the Clinton boom years. Under George W. Bush, it was even more. And there are some really rich people in the U.S. today. In fact, there are now over 3.1 million millionaires. But these are not the richest of all. The U.S. has over 400 billionaires, more than any other country in the world. Who's at the top of that pile? These three have a combined net worth of $131 billion. That's just over the combined budget shortfall of every state in the U.S. for 2011. More than the cost of the global war on terror in 2010. But haven't the rich lost out as well as the poor in the economic crash? When the economy tanked, everyone suffered. In 2010, the average American earned $26,487, down over $2,000 in real terms on 2006. If you were poor, it's been an even bigger drop. The 24 million least wealthy households in America saw their average income go down by 10%. If you were super rich, it went down too. The 400 wealthiest American households lost around 4%, including inflation. That's down to an average of $270.5 million per household. So the richest lost 4%. The poorest lost 10%. Part of the reason average Americans have been hit so hard is where their wealth comes from. Before the crash, middle-class Americans had 65% of their wealth tied up in their house. But the richest 1% of the population kept most of their wealth in stocks and shares and business. So, when house prices went south, many Americans found their wealth disappearing too. Now, one in every seven Americans lives below the poverty line. That's a record 46.2 million people. One in six Americans have no health insurance. That's 50 million people. Of every 17 Americans, at least one will be earning below the minimum wage of $7.25 per hour. 14.5% of American households are defined as food insecure. That means for every seven households, one will have trouble putting enough food on the table. But some things are doing very well. Sales of luxury cars are up. Big luxury brands have reported their best sales figures in years. Tiffany Jewelers up. Brands like Louis Vuitton and Givenchy. Brands like Gucci, Leaf Saint Laurent, and Porsche. And America's top executives are paying themselves very well, too. It is down, but still pretty good. $4.9 million each in the latest figures. And a Washington Post investigation found the following. Since the 1970s, median pay for executives at the nation's largest companies has more than quadrupled, even after adjusting for inflation, according to researchers. Over the same period, pay for a typical non-supervisory worker has dropped more than 10%. But don't the super-rich pay taxes? They do. Just not quite so much as the rest of us. If you earn between $100,000 and $200,000, you will be paying up to 25% effective tax rate, and that's before payroll taxes kick in. The 400 richest tax returns surveyed by the IRS paid just 18.1% in 2008. And it's got better for them. In 2001, as George W. Bush became president, that rate was 23%. So is it 99% versus 1%? The richest 1% of the U.S. population own a third of U.S. net worth. But an even smaller group, the 0.01% of the population, are at a record high. In fact, is it really 99.99% versus 0.01%? 
So where do you fit? Are you one of the 99.99% or one of the 0.01%?